Hello again. Good afternoon. Go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. You will need the authorized version of the scriptures if you're going to follow along in the scriptures for this video. If you have a fake set of scriptures, rather known as a Bible, you know, the NIV, the ESV, the New American Standard, the Mess, uh, whatever it is, this isn't going to work for you, okay? We are going to engage into a expository video on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, okay? <clears throat> so, here's a suggestion for you. Pause the video right now, okay? Get the scriptures, the King James scriptures, and read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 on your own time very quickly, then come back to this, okay? Then, you know, unpause it and let's go. We have a lot of scripture to go over today, okay? This video was requested of me by a brother. Sorry it took so long. It wasn't that easy, but praise the Lord. If you have a ribbon marker, um, go ahead and use it because you're going to need it. We're going to be comparing a lot of scripture with scripture today. Okay? So, we're going to go verse by verse and look at uh, corresponding scriptures as we go. Okay? We begin. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 14 on to verse 18. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 14 on to verse 18. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him, those who are dead in Jesus. Okay? <clears throat> For this we say unto you by the will, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This, dear friends, is referring on to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble wrongly referred to as the rapture, okay? Rapture is not in the scriptures. The catching away, the resurrection is, okay? <clears throat> this is referring on to the, uh, see how, there you go, Brother Alexander. This is referring on to the catching away, all right? First, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 again. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, we're going to get into that a little bit more deeply, and by our gathering together unto him, gathering together, being caught up, okay? Go to Ephesians now, chapter 1. <clears throat> and I will say very quickly about Ephesians chapter 1, we will be reading verses 13 on to verse 15. Or on to verse 14, excuse me. 
Ephesians chapter 1, in my opinion, is the greatest proof text for the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritually with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. For the foundation of the world, what does that mean? Okay, that God was manifest in the flesh. Okay, that God will provide Himself a lamb for burnt offering. Okay, that is what that means. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hath chosen the way of the cross, which today is the only way that you could be right with God and saved and know that you are going to heaven when you die by coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, broken and contrite. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, Predestinated. Once you are saved, born again, you know, converted, okay? You are pre predestinated to go to heaven, to be with Jesus Christ. Okay, that is what that pre what predestination is referring to there in verse 5, okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> verse 6. To, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted... In the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, <coughs> according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself referring unto the Lord Jesus Christ, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Okay? In whom we have obtained an inheritance. What is our inheritance? What are we obtaining? <clears throat> what are we obtaining? The millennial kingdom. Okay? We are obtaining millennial kingdom rule with Jesus Christ God our Father. Okay? That is what we are obtaining. Okay? Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will <clears throat> that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption, catching away of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Being gathered together unto him, right there, verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Okay? Now, 
Back to 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 2. And we're going to get into a few things just off of this one verse. That ye be, new, be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, lowercase s, nor by word, lowercase w, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. The day of Christ is at hand. Okay? Number one. <clears throat> Look at this verse. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled. Galatians chapter 3, one verse. Galatians chapter 3, one verse. O foolish Galatians. Verse 1, by the way, excuse me. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Who hath bewitched you? Hmm? Verse 2 again, That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, okay, Ephesians chapter 1 now, Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 on to verse 21. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 on to verse 21. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all saints, unto all the saints, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Okay? And note that that is a lowercase s there. Okay? Spirit of wisdom. Something that he is going to impart unto you. Okay? Verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality, and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Okay? Which is to come after the time of Jacob's trouble, his second coming. That world to come, after we, the Church of the Living God, are caught up, okay? Our inheritance, millennial reign with Jesus Christ, okay? That world to come? You get it? Okay? Now go back to chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2 again. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit. 1 John, 1 John chapter 4. Now, I have an expository video on 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, which we are going to look at, where we dive deeply into what 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6 is actually talking about. But let's read this. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 on verse 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, Note that's a lowercase s. 
But try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets, the key right there, many false prophets are gone out into the world. A prophet today is one who speaks through the scriptures. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that spirit, is guiding you through the scriptures to speak. Okay, speaking the word of the Lord. And also, we also know that a prophet is someone who also foretells the future events. Okay, this we know. That is key to uh, getting the whole context, which I have a whole other video on. I'm not going to get too deep into it. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God that is prophesying. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. If you are not using the scriptures, is is replaced with has. Very significant. Let's continue. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Right here. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world, the spirit of the power of the air, okay? The devil, the little g god of this world, okay? They are of the world, or are the they, the false prophets. Therefore speak they of the world, fleshly, and the world, those who are in their flesh, Heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, Lord K says, and the spirit of error, things that are imparted. Okay? Okay? You with me so far? Okay? <clears throat> Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word. Nor by word. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Mind how you behave yourself, by the way. Okay? And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Verse 3. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, the scriptures, comma, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing Nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, <laughs> whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of, all of the truth, and destitute of the truth, 
supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 4. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof of cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. You have to also remember, verse 3, if any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, the scriptures, and even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, where are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ located? The scriptures, okay? <clears throat> and the doctrine which is according to godliness. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2 again. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter asked from us, nor, as, nor by letter as from us. Check this out. Go to Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. Different dispensation, under the law, doctrinally not applicable, but you're going to notice some stuff in here as soon as we start reading this chapter, okay? Nehemiah chapter 6. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein though at, the, at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanbalat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? A tactic that the enemies of our Lord employ against we, the Church of the Living God, to take our attention away from the work that the Lord has called us on to, focusing on them and their devilish practices and their lies and their attacks. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 4, Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. They keep coming. And I answered them after the same manner. Then Sanbalat his servant, then sent Sanbalat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. For which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to the, these words? And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. And now shall it be reported to the king according to these words, threatening them. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Come on, let's talk. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. For they all made us afraid, the object that they want, saying, Their hand shall be weakened from the work 
that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabel, who was shut up. And he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee, yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I say, and I said, Should such a man as I flee, and who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he prophesied, pro, excuse me, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. Another tactic of the enemy. Who's working behind these little dogs that bark? Keep that one in mind, okay? <clears throat> Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so in sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalot according to these their works. And on the pro and on the prophetess Nodiah and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. And we gotta read we gotta finish this. We gotta finish this. <clears throat> okay, we have to finish this. So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month, Elio. In fifty and two days, and it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Whether the enemies like to admit that or not, yeah. Moreover, in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, because he was, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah the son of Ara, and his son Johanan had taken the daughter of Meshulam the son of Berkiah. Also, they reported his good deeds before me. He's not a bad guy, and uttered my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in. Fear. Okay? Now, in contrast to that, go to uh, Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Okay? Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, verses 22 on to verse 29. Okay? Here's something that came... From the apostles. Okay? Check this out. Wanted to read this to contrast whom God had not sent and they were sending letters. Okay? Want to contrast this with you. Uh, Acts chapter 15, verses 22 on to verse 29. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner, actually came from the apostles. Okay? The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us had troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, 
men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that Spirit. Let's continue. Okay? And to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication. For which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. Okay? Look at verse 24. For as much as we have heard that certain when went, which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. Like the Lord did not send those unto Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter 6. Okay? Okay, are you with me? Because when you look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, those who are troubling you, okay? That ye be, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Okay, And you also have to remember, people who are troubling you, trying to uh, tell you that the day of Christ is at hand. Oh, wait a minute, we missed it? Get more on that in a second. Also keep in mind, bro, uh, beloved brethren, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 13 on to verse 15. For, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to to their works. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Okay? Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 7. Come on, fingers, work with me. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 7. Unto the angel of the church at, of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. How do you try these people? Scripture. Comparing Scripture with Scripture. Okay? Let's continue. And has borne, and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Oh, beg your pardon. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Okay? Now, let's look at this day of Christ is at hand. Now on this, the day of Christ appears three times in the scripture. And what's very interesting to know, note about this is that the day of Christ, the three times it appears, is only within the Pauline epistles. Go to Philippians. Go to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians, not Ephesians, Philippians chapter 1, 
versus one. On to verse 11. Philippians chapter 1, verses 1, on to verse 11. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making request with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident in this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Okay? Until the day of Jesus Christ. Okay? What is this day of Jesus Christ? Hmm? Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have in my heart, and as much as both in my bonds and in the defense of the con and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve these approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and with offense till the day of Christ, the day of Christ, being filled with the fir being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. The day of Christ. Pauline epistles, the day of Christ. Hmm. Philippians chapter 2 now. Philippians chapter 2. We will read verses 12 on to verse 16. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputing, that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. The day of Christ. The day of Christ. When we look at this in context, and plus the fact that day of Christ, okay, Day of Christ. Words are important. Okay? It only appears three times. And obviously, the third time that we, it appears is right there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. Okay? The day of Christ. Now, let's also address the day of the Lord very quickly. The day of the Lord appears 29 times in the scriptures. It appears five times in the New Testament. It appears once in Acts chapter 2, verse 20, and he is referencing in Acts chapter 2, verse 20, Joel chapter 2, verse 31. But in the Pauline epistles, the day of the Lord appears three times, and there is also another appearance in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, which we will not look at that one, but we're looking at uh, the Pauline epistles. Go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 5. And you want to know what this one is right off the bat. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. In the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay? Now, okay, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 14. As also ye have acknowledged us in part, 
that we are your rejoicing, even as ye are also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. The day of the Lord Jesus, okay? And let's look at the final day of the Lord, okay? Day of the Lord, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. Okay, check this out. We will read now verses 1 on to verse 3. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as to veil upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. Hmm. Okay? The day of the Lord. Here in the New Testament. Okay? With the day of Christ. The day of Christ. In the Old Testament, the day of the Lord can refer, most often refer on to the second coming, okay? And also unto his first coming. It's defined by the context in which it appears, okay? Now, there are those out there that say that the references that we looked at, including the day of Christ, is a reference unto the second coming. I don't think so. I don't think so, okay? Because... Let's look at the second coming for a bit on this, okay? Very important. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is specifically talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. That time period that comes after the church of the living God is resurrected, caught up, okay? It's very important to note that. But go to Matthew chapter 24. We will be reading verses 23 on to verse 31. Okay? Matthew chapter 23 on uh, Matthew chapter 24 verses 23 on to verse 31. Let's read. Now remember, dispensationally and doctrinally, this is still the Old Testament because the death of the testator, which brings in the New Testament, by the way, had not happened yet. Doctrinally and dispensationally, this is the Old Testament for the Jewish people, okay? This, Matthew chapter 24, is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Which is for the Jews, not the church of the living God, which is comprised of both Jews and Gentiles, okay? You get it? Okay, let's go. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, Christ, anointed one, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, the second coming. Keep reading. For, where, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Are you looking at that? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Aha! A clue. Hold up. 
And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Look at verse 30 right there. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. With power and great glory. See him. See him. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Come on, come on, come on. Revelation, come on, fingers work with me. Revelation chapter 1. Look at this. Come on, fingers. Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 7. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace, from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven capital S spirits, which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the king of kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verse 7. Look at this. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, reference on to Isaiah chapter 52, or 53 verse 2, okay? And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. Referring on to his second coming. Okay? Referring on to his second coming. As he was in Matthew chapter 24. Now, when it comes to Paul teaching about the catching away, you show me in the scriptures, in the Pauline epistles, where Paul says anything about everyone's going to see him. Everyone is going to see him. Hmm? Show it to me. In the Pauline epistles, with the day of the Lord, day of the Lord Jesus, but the day of the Lord Jesus, okay? And also this, the day of Christ is at hand. Show me where, anywhere, where Paul says, that all eyes are going to see him. That's because it's not his second coming. Okay? We, the church of the living God, we are going to hear our names called in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we are going to see him. Caught up. See? In context, the day of Christ is at hand. I believe, and I will stand through this until proven wrong through the scriptures, I believe, in context, this is the catching away he's referring to. Okay? Now, let's continue on to verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except... There come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, 
the son of perdition. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 9. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be com comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. There is no catching away. We are going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Okay? Rooted and built up in him. Rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving, are you looking at that? Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Okay? Verse 3 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Okay? Go to Acts chapter 20. Again, or uh, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 on to verse 31. Okay? Acts chapter 20, verses 28 on to verse 31. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? One God, Spirit, Soul, and Body. Okay? Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed to some perdition. Okay? And about to... About to the traditions that we looked at in Colossians, okay? Let's go there again. Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the of the world, and not after Christ. Mark chapter seven. Mark chapter seven. Mark chapter seven, verses nine on to verse thirteen. And he said unto them, This is Jesus speaking, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own 
tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, Catholics, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Hmm? The traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, not after Christ, God, okay, okay. Now go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Come on, work with me. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? Now the Spirit is speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, which, which is well known of, uh, among the Catholics quite well, and other um, daughters of the whore, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, okay? And can, can commanding to abstain from meats, like the Catholics do, also Islam does, a daughter of the whore, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, okay? Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And that truth is that the dietary restrictions today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, is not applicable to be right with God, to be saved, or anything like that. Okay? For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Look at verses 1 and 2 again. Okay? About a falling away. People like to bring up about the fact that falling away, their Greek word is apostasia, or something like that, meaning to fall away from a standing position. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, capital S, beg your pardon, the Lord speaking, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus? It is possible for someone of the Church of the Living God, one who is truly saved, born again converted, for one to be giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You don't need to pray. Prayer is a work. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Just believe. You don't have a changed life after salvation. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. To name a few. There is no catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble is actually the time of the church's trouble because it's for the purification of the church. Catholic doctrine. Okay? It is possible for someone who has the Lord living within them to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines and of devils, to speak lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That is possible. Yes, a saved man or woman can get really messed up. 
But see, you got to remember, you get too far gone and ignore the chastening if you are of the church of the living God and God the Father lives within you. You know, our Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, okay? If you ignore that, he can drop you. He can drop you, kill you, and get you out. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, catching away. Okay? That is possible. That is possible. But more rather, more rather now, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now, I read these in the previous video, but it's very pertinent for this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 9. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. It's just belief. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Perfect example. Okay? Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janais and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no far uh, further, for their folly shall be made, shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Okay? To drive this home, 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 21, verses 18 on to verse 21. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, <laughs> hello, whereby we know that it is the last time. Are not the enemies of our Lord coming out in droves, in waves, just like the Jesuits do? Hmm? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us, but ye, plural, have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. What is that unction, by the way? You are sealed until the day of redemption. God the Father dwells within you if you are of the church of the living God. Saved, born again, converted, you know, truly saved. You have God the Father living within you. You have an unction from the Holy One. I, brethren, am more inclined to be persuaded onto the latter. Now, the falling away, where it says here in verse 3, For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. I believe that could be in a twofold manner, but I am more um, favoring, uh, I am more inclined, excuse me, to go with the latter. Yes, those are the church of the living God, especially with all the propaganda and fear that's being pushed on people, can lose sight 
and fall for some really wicked things. But see, there's the thing of chastisement, chastening. Because if they are truly saved of the church of the living God, and they're falling away from a standing position, God's going to chasten them, rebuke them. Uh, those whom I rebuke and chase, uh, those whom I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Okay? That is possible. But when you are looking around today, and especially, especially on this social media stuff, for that day shall not come except there shall except there come a falling away first. I am more inclined to believe that the falling away is simply verse 18 under verse 21 in 1 John chapter 2. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Right here. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. Being made manifest that they were never saved in the first place. Clinging to them by flatteries. You could say. And when the tough, when the going get tough, the tough <laughs> get made manifest. Especially right now, today. Today, I am more inclined to believe it is more rather pertinent onto that. While yes, those who are truly saved of the church of the living God can get really messed up and fall for seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and can go so far as to even have their conscience seared. But there is chastising, chastisement, rebuke of the Lord because the Lord dwells within you. And worst case scenario, if you don't repent, he's going to kill you. Because in 1 John chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 21, but ye... Have an unction from the Holy One, those of you who are saved. And ye know all things, because you have the mind of Christ, and we have the Scriptures. I have not written unto you, because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Falling away. That uh, What's that guy's name, by the way? Um, Farag? whatever his name is, saying that the falling away won't happen until the, uh, as he falsely calls it, the rapture happens first and then the falling away happens. <laughs> Guy doesn't use the scriptures, by the way, anyway. He uses an NIV, just to let you know, okay? I personally believe, brethren, while yes, the falling away, again, can incorporate those who are saved and get really messed up, but I think it is more rather that those who say they are of us are being made manifest that guess what? There are many out there who call themselves Christians, but they are not of the church of the living God. And when this kind of nonsense is going on outside our doors right now, absolute suffering reveals. And absolute suffering reveals absolutely. You have been tried. You have been measured. Weighed in the balance and found wanting. I believe it's more applicable to say that the falling away is more geared toward those who say they are of us, but are not of us. I will take correction on that. And discuss with brethren on that because like I said in actuality it could be twofold okay but let's do the deal with this and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition the son of perdition go to Daniel chapter 12 Daniel chapter 12 who is the son of perdition this man of sin 
Daniel chapter 12. I, I beg your pardon, brethren. Hold on one second. Okay, beg your pardon about that, brethren. Beg your pardon. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12, which I have still not gotten to yet. Beg your pardon, brethren. Okay. Daniel 12, verses 8 on to verse 13. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, that maketh desolate uh, set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Okay? Okay, now go to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verses 21 on to verse 30. John chapter 13, verses 21 on to verse 30. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit, pick apart, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked on one another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Shimon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast said, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop. S-O-P. It's not a coincidence. When I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, S-O-P, not a coincidence, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. Look at this. And after the sop, S-O-P, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him, for some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, By those things that we had need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. The sop, S-O-P, son of perdition, that man of sin. What is so significant about that, dearly beloved, is simply this. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, that day, catching away, Except there come a falling away first, which is happening, obviously. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. With what we just looked at in John chapter 13, by the way, okay, now go back there and I just closed the scriptures to where we were looking at in John 13, okay? What you note know about John 13 from verses 21 on to verse 30. You note some things. Number one, these were all Jews. These were all Jews. Judas was one of the disciples. He was of them. Okay? But he received a sop. And when he received a sop, Satan entered into him. And then he went out after having received the sop, and it was night. 
Satan entered into him, the son of perdition. The man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the, the abomination that maketh desolate. I have a video addressing this uh, called the Antichrist, which I'm going to link in this video, okay, uh, among many, okay. Those are titles for the beast, the man of sin, son of perdition, who I believe the scriptures teach is going to be a Jew. And he is going to betray the God of his fathers, he being a Jew. Now there is going to be a definite connection with the Roman Catholic Church. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the man of sin is going to be Jewish. Or at least of Jewish descent. At the least. Okay? Might be a hybrid of some kind. I don't know. But he is definitely going to be linked onto the Jewish people. Because if you know anything about the Jewish people, you know that there's no way they're going to accept a Gentile Messiah. It has to be one of their own. Okay? You with me so far? Good. Okay. Now, verse 4 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. You ought to know this by heart, dearly beloved. You ought to know this by heart. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven, into heaven, excuse me. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Okay? And Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah chapter 31. Check this out. Check this out. Isaiah chapter 31. We're going to read this whole chapter. I hope you can handle it. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Egypt, a type of the world. And stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. And in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. Neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. For thus, saith the Lord, for thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. Come down, second coming.
As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also he will deliver it, and passing over he will preserve it. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomfited. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and his furnace, the city of the great king, in Jerusalem. Okay? Go to Daniel now, chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, verses 23, on to verse 28. Daniel chapter 7, verses 23, on to verse 28. We read, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break in pieces. And the ten horns out of his kingdom, out of this kingdom, are ten are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into the hand into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, to consume it, and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom, and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Referring to when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, comes down second time unto the kingdom of heaven which is Jerusalem okay hitherto is the end of the matter as for me Daniel my cogitations much troubled me and my countenance changed in me but I kept the matter in my heart now Daniel chapter 8 verses 9 on to verse 14 Daniel chapter 8 verses 9 on to verse 14 Oh, oh wait, oh, hold on. Yes, on the verse 14. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south, and toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host of the stars to the ground, and stamped upon them. You can reference that with Re uh, Revelation chapter 12, by the way. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down when the uh, beast goes in to declare, oh, by the way, I'm God in the rebuilt third temple. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation, to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Until two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And, skipping down to verses 23 on to verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, because Satan's going to be in him. And he shall destroy wonderfully. 
and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, the Jews, the apple of God's eye, during the time of Jacob's trouble. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, or Jesus Christ, God our Father. But he shall be broken without hand. And go to Daniel chapter 9, verses 24, on to verse 27. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24, on to verse 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Upon thy people, the Jews, upon thy holy city, Jerusalem, seven weeks, seven years, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, seven years, and threescore and two weeks. Oh, excuse me, uh, seven weeks. Uh, excuse me about that. Uh, my bad. Let's reread this. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, beg your pardon, and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end, the, uh, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Confirm the covenant that already exists between Rome and Israel. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolates. And finally on this, Daniel chapter 11, verses 20, on to verse 39. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom, but within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom, shall, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood shall they be over, overflown from before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with the small people. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the providence, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, and spoil, and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall first cast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. 
Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits, and return to his own land. Oh, excuse me. At the time appointed he shall return, and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Kittim shall come against him, Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. The man of sin. Son of perdition. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they of understanding among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, and to purge, and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. The God of his fathers. He's going to be Jewish. Nor the desire nor the desire of women. Nor regard any God. Nor the desire of women. Could be celibates. Uh, you know, celibate priest. You know. Or Truly a sodomite? I have long said that this is uh, going to be a Catholic Pope. You know, a Jewish Pope being celibate. But there again, there again, I am willing to entertain maybe, in fact, maybe he may be a sodomite. Don't know. But regardless, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. He's going to be a Jewish. He's going to be Jewish. Personally, I do believe that he is going to be a pope of some kind, meaning that when he declares himself to be God, he's going to be the ultimate pope. Being celibate, may have the desire of women, women but I believe personally that he's going to be celibate, not rather a sodomite. That is my own personal belief. Okay? But, Let's continue. Let's reread that. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. Okay? Okay? Now, verse 5 in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Remember ye not that when I was was yet with you, I told you these things? Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verse 31. Just one verse. Acts chapter 20, verse 31. Come on, fingers. Work. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone every one night and day with tears, okay? And 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 
2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 under verse 21. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 under verse 21. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and will not be burdensome to you. For I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walk we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. For I fear, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whispering, swellings, tumults. And lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have, which they have committed. Now, Verse 6 in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 13. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes. The elect there is talking about those who are saved. Those who are saved. Elect also uh, means those of the Jews, but you are elect in that you are saved. Okay? Not this election that Calvin teaches. Blah. No, not that at all. You are elect in your salvation. Okay? Let's continue. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Now pay attention. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him, dead to the world. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him, suffer for Jesus Christ, being persecuted for righteousness sake, his righteousness sake. Okay? And remember, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Remember that, okay? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Okay? Check this out. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the, to the subverting of the hearers. Look at verse 13. If we believe not, Yet he abideth faithful. 
he cannot deny himself. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, once again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1, on to verse 11. One second, brethren. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1, on to verse 11. I know we already read verses 1 on to verse 3. Let's get the whole sandwich of this. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as to prevail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Remember how when he received the sop in John chapter 13, he went out and it was night. Remember that? Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And the time of Jacob's trouble is God's wrath upon this earth. We are not appointed on to wrath. We're leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. Now, go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 on to verse 33. Uh, 32, excuse me. Uh, yeah, 33, excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Ephesians chapter uh, chapter 5, verses 22 on to verse 33. Beg your pardon. Now, you're going to notice something here. Going to notice something here. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. Keep reading. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The word, the scriptures. That he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Look at that. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Are we not called the Lamb's wife? The bride of Christ? Huh? Huh? Okay. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Are you looking at verse 30? 
Don't, don't look at me. Look at verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Let's read that again. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Now, right here, right here. Yes, talking about relation between a man and a wife. Yes. But here's the bow on the package. This is a great mystery. Oh, excuse me. But I speak concerning Christ and the church, his body, part of his bones, of his flesh, his body, the church of the living God. He cannot deny himself. Okay? You with me? Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. We are part of his bones, his flesh. He cannot deny himself. Okay? He cannot deny himself. Now, back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we will read verse 6 and 7. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of, a of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Remember, we are of his bones and of his flesh. He cannot deny himself. We are the bride of Christ, the Lamb's wife, the church of the living God. Okay? Okay? You with me so far? Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Jude, verse 4. Jude, verse 4. Verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, and ungodly men, turning the grace of God, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now go to verses 8 on the verse 13 in Jude. Likewise also these filthy dreamers, defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he dis disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, who were dead in trespasses and sins, meaning those who are not saved are dead in trespasses and sins, 
where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, those who are not saved, who reject the word of the Lord, who reject Jesus Christ, God our Father, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Remember, we are not appointed unto wrath, but to obtain sal salvation, getting out of here before it is too late. Okay? Okay? And also, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay? You with me? You with me? Okay? Okay, now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Of course, we have to address this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 on to verse 58. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And very quickly, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Here is the catching away in the book of Revelation. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Jesus Christ is the door. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Being caught up. Now, go back to 2 Thessalonians, <coughs> chap uh, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity already work, doth already work. That's why we looked in Jude, okay? All right, and in Ephesians, those who are dead in trespasses and sins, okay? Okay? The mystery of, all, of iniquity already works, doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. We, Church of the Living God, are part of Jesus Christ. We are not little Christs. God the Father dwells within us. We are part of his body, his bones, and his flesh. We are his bride. Okay? We are his bride. Got it? He cannot deny himself. So, only he who now letteth will let. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, through the church, 
through the body of Christ, through those of us who are saved, born again, converted, sealed unto the day of redemption, being caught up. The Lord Jesus Christ, through his body, the church, is letting, hindering, okay? Only he who now letteth will let, until he, the body of Christ, catching away, be taken out of the way. God is omnipresent. God sees everything, okay? He's not going anywhere, okay? Is there any place where someone can hide, where his eyes won't see, where he won't hear? Can anyone hide from the presence of the Lord? No, because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, okay? is omnipresent, always there, okay? He's not going anywhere. His body will be taken up because we are part of his body. He cannot deny himself, okay? So, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way catching away okay the catching away and of course verse 8 and then after the church of the living God is taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming okay Revelation chapter 6 Revelation chapter 6 Verses 1 on to verse 2. And I saw when the Lamb, who is the Lamb? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a singular crown, was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer the man of sin, son of perdition, the abomination that maketh desolate, the beast. Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ opens one of the seals, the first seal, and psst, the man of sin, son of perdition, is released. And Revelation chapter 19, of course, Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Take your pardon, brethren. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was fit, called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. This is the Lord Jesus Christ at his second coming. Okay? And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is the capital W, Word of God. Okay? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. There we are. Coming down with him. Okay? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the wine presses, the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. <clears throat> Back to Second Thessalonians chapter two. 
Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. Reading verse 8 again. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. All power and signs and lying wonders. Remember, remember, the Jews require a sign. Okay, remember? Okay? And with all deceivableness, oh, excuse me, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 on verse 8. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names, the name of blasphemy, excuse me. And the beast, which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. The dragon gave him his power. Remember, after he received the sop, Satan entered it into him. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. If thou wilt fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. Okay? And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. <clears throat> and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. <clears throat> and it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Okay? Okay? Now go to Exodus on this. Okay, go to Exodus. Exodus. Very quickly, look at verse 9 again. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Signs and lying wonders. Go to Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. One second, brethren. Exodus chapter 7. We will be reading verses 10 on to the close of the chapter. Okay? Check this out. Exodus chapter 7 verses 10 on to verse 25. Or, yes. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh. What was a rod made out of? Wood. Okay. And before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh, check this out, Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, remember? Egypt, type of the world. Pharaoh, a type of Satan, okay? Now the magicians of Egypt, 
they also did in like manner with their enchantments. They also were able to do it. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But, and note this. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. The true will always eat up the false. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hardened, that he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Okay? The magicians of Egypt, the wise men, the sorcerers, were able to mimic the true miracle there of casting Aaron's rod down and making it a serpent. They were able to do it too. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Okay? Let's continue. The Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuseth to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against he come. And the rod which was turned to a serpent shalt thou take in thine hand. Okay? And thou shalt say unto him, the Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood turned to blood. <clears throat> and the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Now check this out. <clears throat> and the ma magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. Note that. And the magicians of e Egypt did so with their enchantments. The magicians were able to turn water into blood. Think about this. Turning wine to blood? Transubstantiation? What the Catholics teach? And note that it's coming from the magicians of Egypt? Mm. Get a load of that. And note about the rod, how the Lord Jesus Christ will rule them with a rod of iron. And yet the magicians were able to turn their rods also into a serpent. But Aaron's rod swallowed them up. Hmm? You see that? And the magicians of Egypt, uh, verse 22, did so with their enchantments. The magicians of Egypt. You see that? Verse 23, And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Egyptians digged round about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled, after that the Lord had smitten the river. And also note, a rod is made out of wood, comes from the earth. Water is on the earth, 
of the earth. Okay? Now, Exodus chapter 8, verses 1 and verse 7. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou, will re and if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. Now, this judgment here, this miracle of the frogs, is a direct judgment against one of the pagan gods of the Egyptians. Which one that is, I don't remember offhand, okay? But it is a direct judgment against one of the little g gods of Egypt. And also, uh, in the book of Revelation, uh, three spirits came out uh, like frogs, okay? You get it? Let's continue. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly. They come out of the river, of the earth. Which shall go up and come into thine house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading froes. And all the frogs shall come up, both on, on thee, and upon thy people, and upon thy servants. <clears throat> And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his rod over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Look at this. And the magicians did so with their enchantments. And brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. They were able to mimic that too. Calling frogs up out of the water, out of the river. Beg your pardon. Turning water into blood with their enchantments and stuff. Using their magic. And turning their rods into serpents. Only to be engulfed, uh, swallowed up by Aaron's rod. Okay? The rod, the water to blood, and frogs. Okay? Things pertaining unto the earth, but on the surface. The water is on the earth, in the earth. Okay? The rod is made out of wood, comes from the earth. Frogs came out of the water. Okay, now note this. Note this. In verses 16 on to verse 19 in Exodus chapter 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Dust. Dirt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Lice is a bug, a little critter, microscopic. If you've ever had head lice before, and there is historical documentation that proves that Egypt, at one time during these day, uh, times, had a lice problem, verifying this in Exodus. Okay? But note this, <clears throat> verse 18. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. They couldn't mimic to taking, making dust into lice. Lice is a bug. Okay? Verse, and look at verse 19. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. Now, now get the significance of this. Okay? Smiting the dust, dirt, Turning dirt 
into a microscopic little bug. Okay? From dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. Okay? Making something, a bug, lice, out of dirt. They called, the magicians were able to call the frogs up. Okay? They were able to turn the water into blood. They were able to mimic that. They were able to turn their rods into serpents. Okay? But they weren't able to take dust, dirt, and turn dirt into something living, hence a little bug. You get that? Do you see that? Hence, hence, go back now, go back now to 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. They performed the, the signs and wonders of the rod to a serpent, water to blood, calling frogs, but they couldn't take dirt and make dirt into a living little thing, a bug. They couldn't do that. Signs and lying wonders is only so far that they can take these things. Do you get it? Do you get it? And of course, go to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 on the verse 4, which I already used in the video before this one. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 on the verse 4. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. And I addressed this in the other video that I uploaded today, okay? For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. That is for your benefit so that you know, because God knows everything. Okay? God knows everything. I already addressed that in the previous video. But God knows everything. The proveth you so that you may know that you, whether, you whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Verse 4, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Okay? And now, Revelation chapter 18, <clears throat> Revelation chapter 18, verses 15, under verse 22. Revela uh, Revelation, Deuteronomy. Excuse me, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 on to verse 22. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto me, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Prophecy about Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. Okay. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not 
will come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Test of a prophet. But if it come to pass, he's proving you. He's proving you so you may know whether or not you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. See? You see that? Okay? Now, go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 11. Okay? Well, on to verse 12. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay? Isaiah chapter 66. Oops, I'll take that bookmark out. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. Look at that. Look at that right there. Come on. I also will choose their delusions, and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Reference to the second coming. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 and verse 12 again. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perished, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Going back and looking at Isaiah chapter 66, verses 3 and 4. He that killeth an ox, as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb, as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation, as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. They have chosen their own ways. The way that is contrary unto the Lord, see? Okay? 
and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions. If you don't want the truth, God will send you strong delusion. And for this cause, verse 11, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Verse 4 in Isaiah 66, I also will choose their delusion, and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. Okay? Now go to Romans. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 32. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 32. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the, invi for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse." But that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up, to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Worshipping the flesh, worshipping the creation, ye shall be as gods. Okay? For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient. And here's the fruits of that. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, <laughs> disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company, as they like to say, right? Okay? Now go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. This is actually probably going to have to be a two-part video, brethren, because I can only record up to three, uh, three hours on this. So, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1, on to verse 11. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid in Christ, is hid with Christ, excuse me, in God. Who Christ, when Christ, 
who is our life, shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Be caught up. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time, when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Jew nor where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Of course applying for those who are saved. That applies unto those who are saved. Okay? Now go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, chapter 33. Ezekiel, chapter 33. Let's refresh our memories. Uh, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 30, under verse 33. Who had pleasure in unrighteousness. Also thou, son of man, Ezekiel 33, verses 30 on to verse 33. Also thou, son of man, the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word, what is the word that cometh from the Lord. That. <laughs> Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. There you go. <laughs> and they came and they come unto thee as the people cometh. And they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument for they hear thy words but they do them not and when it cometh to pass lo it will come to pass then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them and of course got to go to Jeremiah chapter 5 Jeremiah chapter 5 Jeremiah chapter 5 Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 21 on to verse 31. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence? which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it, and though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. But this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. Ah, but this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait, as he that setteth snares. 
They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Look at that. Are you looking at that? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear, me, bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 6. I read this also in the previous video as well. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. About the false prophets, okay? These infiltrators, these heretics, okay? Who handle the word of God deceitfully, if they handle it at all. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Beg your pardon. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Not having eyes to see, not being spiritually discerned, because they are dead in trespasses and sins. Okay? In whom the God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Had to read verse 7. But did you get that? But we have this treasure in earth and vessels, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, in our bodies, okay? That the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. Not of us. Not of us. Now, this is going to have to be a two part video. Okay, I'm going to stop this, take a quick moment, and then we are going to finish the rest in another video. Okay, so stay tuned. We're going to finish uh, in from verses 13 on to verse 17. Okay, so see you in the next video, which will be coming right away. Okay.